Today I want to talk about the concept of the vicarious atonement. Have you ever heard about the vicarious atonement? I'm sure most of you, you have heard about the vicar of Christ, uh, the Pope. But uh, <laughs> this guy is so blasphemous, right? How, how can he say that he's a vicar? <laughs> Do you know what vicar means? Ah, my friends. I'm going to show you exactly what uh, the vicarious atonement means and you're going to understand how blasphemous the Pope is trying to say that he can be the vicar. The vicar is basically the, the replacement because he says he's the vicar of Christ. Anyway, enough of the Pope. Let me, let me just tell you. Now, the vicarious atonement of Christ is uh, the idea that Jesus took the place of mankind Jesus took the place of mankind. Now, do you remember the story of the thief at the cross? What really happened? Okay, do you remember what really happened at the cross? So, there was thief A and thief B. Okay, thief 1 and thief 2. Now, this is a thief who uh, never did anything. He just uh, knew I'm a thief and that's it. And he was just saying, oh, save yourself and blah, blah, blah. Don't uh, think about me. And this other thief, thief 1, he knew that he deserved dying. But then he asked Jesus if Jesus can give him his life. I'm just literally trying to <laughs> explain in, in simple terms. He like told Jesus, Jesus, remember me, save me. I am a sinner. I know I deserve death. But you say that you're dying for our sins. Then if you're dying for our sins, please die for my sins also. So give me your life, okay? So that I can have your life. You see, Jesus himself, he was righteous. He deserved living. So Jesus, having deserved living, he basically gave this thief his life. And the thief who was guilty and deserving to die, he gave Jesus his death and his guilt. This is what we call the vicarious atonement or the substitutionary atonement. So the thief gives Jesus his guiltiness and his death and jesus gives the thief his righteousness and his life the other one did nothing so he just remained with his sins this is exactly what it's all about all right are you, are you seeing the point here so jesus took the place of mankind the suffering the penalty of sin and atonement is a term meaning reconciliation when you hear the word atonement atonement basically means reconciliation or amending okay and uh, the word vicarious, the word vicarious means it has been done in place of or instead of someone else. So when you hear the Pope trying to say he's the vicar of Christ, so he's trying to say that he is Christ himself here on earth. How can you be Christ here on earth? You can be the image of Christ, but you can't literally be Christ. He says that uh, he is Christ himself. So this, this is a big blasphemy. And that's why everybody who follows uh, Catholicism and claims to be a Christian is really lost and really mixed up, all right? So, the vicarious atonement of Christ, okay? The vicarious atonement of Christ. We have understood that uh, it's done in place of or done uh, instead of someone else. So, in literal terms, the Christian concept of vicarious atonement is that Jesus was substituted for humanity and punished for our faults in order to pay for the sins that we had committed and reconcile us to God. Vicarious atonement is also referred to as substitutionary atonement. Okay? I'm sure you've heard about that. And, uh, or penal substitution. Are you getting the point here? So, something that you have to understand is that, uh, according to the Bible, vicarious atonement is an, uh, is an accurate description of Jesus' uh, uh, role in our salvation now let me show you something here the bible tells us in first peter 3 18 that for christ has also once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit so look at these words the just for the unjust is it this exactly what i'm showing you here he is just he suffered for the unjust he was righteous he became guilty for us he deserved life, but he got death instead. Seeing the point here? All right. So, this one refers to Jesus' death as the righteous one suffering for the, for the unrighteous. 
That's exactly what vicarious atonement or penal atonement or substitutionary atonement is all about. All right? And also we can see in the book of Mark 10.45, indicating that he came to give his life, Mark, Mark 10 verse uh, 45, tells us that Jesus came to give his life for us. All right? Look at this. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto. You see? He did not come to be ministered, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus came to give his life as a ransom for all of us. And this one indicates that he came to give his life. His life. Not He did not come to be ministered for. He did not come to establish a religion. He did not come to be, be a, an earthly king. No. He came to give his life for all of us. His life for all of us. Imagine you are this person because you deserve to die because you're a sinner. And then Jesus says, no, 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 you sinner, give me your death. Give me your guilt and let me give you my life and give you my, 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 my righteousness. All right? Are you seeing the point here? So um, the Bible tells us that we are bought by a price. We have been brought, bought by a price. We did not just, uh, Jesus did not just say, okay, I forgive you guys. No matter what you do, keep on doing it. It's okay. No, we were bought. What you did was really wrong. You deserve to die. But Jesus go, went and paid for that. And then he said, I have paid. Give me Keith. Give me Josephine. Give me so and so. I've already paid for him. Take him out of jail. I've done his penalty. Are you seeing the point? The Bible tells us in First Corinthians uh, 6 verse uh, 19. Look at this. First Corinthians 6 19. It tells us what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify in your God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. So, the, your spirit and your soul, they have already been purchased. They are no longer Satan's. They are no longer even yours. You have already been bought. You are owned by someone. Okay? You're already owned by someone. You gave your free will to Jesus. And you told him, Jesus, now, here is my free will. Pick me up. Buy me up. Now you're already bought. You live with him. You're with him in his, in his family. So now you're no longer an outsider, but you're already bought. You're in. Okay? So that should motivate us to give glory to God in the things that we say and do. And uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, it tells us something else. 2 Corinthians 5 verse uh, 21 it tells us that uh, god the father made him sin to be uh, made him sin okay L look at this for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him you see jesus who knew no sin he was made sin he was made guilty he was made as if he's the one who deserves death and yet he was not the one so that we can get his righteousness and we can get his life Seeing the point here, understanding this, all right? So, our sin was transferred to Jesus and our suffering, okay? Our sin was transferred to Jesus and our suffering became Jesus' suffering. And his death was vicarious. Jesus was our substitute. He was a penal, all right? His death atoned for us. Jesus made amends between us and God. And Jesus was condemned instead of us. We were supposed to be condemned. But Jesus said, no, 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 condemn me instead, all right? He was condemned instead of us. Even in the Old Testament, the prophets, the Old Testament prophets, such as Isaiah, spoke, the, uh, spoke of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as, um, as taking the penalty of sin on our behalf. Let's look at Isaiah, Isaiah 53, uh, verse 5. Look at Isaiah saying, okay, he's saying that uh, Jesus was not wounded for his own transgression. Look, but he was wounded for our transgression, not for his own transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So all these things, Jesus being at that cross, it was not because of himself. He did not die because of himself. I saw another guy telling me, Jesus, he was killed because he's, he tries to poke his nose in people's businesses. No, he was doing this for you and for me so that you can have 
His vicarious atonement, his substitutionary atonement, his penal atonement. You can have his life and his righteousness and then he can get your guilt and your death. <coughs> Getting the point here. So in broad terms, we have to understand that human beings are hopelessly lost and are unable to reconcile with God on their own. We can't. On our own, we can't. Look at this thief. He could do nothing on his own. He could do purely nothing on his own. This is because of our sin, which no amount of good works, no matter how much this sin try to tell God, God, I want to come to your place. I, I'm a good man. No, he could not be able to go on his own. All right? No amount of good works can be able to save a sinner. All right? Since God is perfect and holy, we can never hope to pay for our own sins in order to be with him. So Jesus Christ was offered as our substitute, all right, as our substitute, instead of our trying and our failing to cover the penalty for our own sins. Jesus became the vicarious object. He became the vicarious object of God's justice. With this exchange of our sin, with this ex exchange, our sin was paid for. And we can be declared right now as righteous. You are righteous in Christ Jesus. Right now, nobody can be able to say this thief was a sinner anymore. No, this thief went to heaven because he took the life of Jesus and gave Jesus his death. So this thief is clean. This thief is as if he never sinned. This thief is as if he never stole from anyone. And you'll find him in heaven rejoicing and, and, and hugging the angels and you'll be like, is this the same thief? No, because he has the life of Jesus. Are you seeing the point? So let's look at... Uh, the Bible tells us this in the book of Romans, uh, Romans uh, 4, mm, verse 5, okay, it tells us this, look at this, it says, but to him that worketh not, you don't have to work for anything, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. If you don't put your own works, you don't say it's because I'm good, because I've, I've done this and I've done this, and you say that it is only Jesus who has died for my sins, I pick his righteousness. Then, if you don't work, if you don't put your own works, all right, and you believe on Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, then your faith will be counted for righteousness. And also, we see Romans 8, verse 1. Look at this. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. All right? Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit? So right now you're not condemned. There is nobody who will condemn you. Nobody could be able to condemn this thief and tell him, Oh, you thief, you're still uh, guilty. No, there is no condemnation. He's like, uh, think about the soldiers telling this thief, Oh, you, you're a thief. He, he was laughing and saying, probably, I'm just kidding. Yeah? Maybe he could just have laughed and told the soldiers, I've done nothing. Jesus already took my, my sins, my guilt, my penalty, my death. So just kill this body, but I'm going to heaven. You see the point? Because right now there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you, if you find it interesting, please give it a like. And also you can subscribe and uh, share to your friends. And also in the description below, we have other channels outside YouTube. Please Check them out and also share to your friends. Let them also hear the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a good time.